It's been four years since I tackled the Sobek because, to be honest with you, even though I'm a shotgun fanatic, I didn't really love the Sobek all that much. But what if I told you that this lowly, standard, mastery rank 7 shotgun is capable of doing almost whatever you want in Warframe? Would you believe me? Well, thankfully you don't have to, because seeing is believing my friends, and today we're gonna be revisiting this absolutely outstanding mastery rank 7 shotgun. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, something that you can get into without investing a whole lot into the weapon. But fear not, my friends, we also got endgame setups, and yes, we're gonna be tackling that all-important acid shells build as well. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Sobek. Let's begin by having a quick look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Sobek is an old school automatic shotgun, so basically you point, you aim and you, you shoot stuff with a shotgun and it does have a bit of a recoil on it because you know, it's a shotgun, but honestly it's more decent than you might think. Let's take the standard 15 meter test, roughly like so. As you can see, most of the pellets will be landing within the crosshairs. Now, you got a magazine of 20, which is not bad, but the reload is a pinch on the lengthy side, so it can be a little bit annoying. Outside of that, there's really nothing special about the Sobek. It's a true blue, old school shotgun with a couple of tricks. And we'll talk tricks just a tad later. But until then, my friends, mod capacity is 60 out of 60. And if your Sobek comes with only 30 out of 30, you jump into actions and you plug in the Auto King Catalyst. Now, you might be a newer player coming into Warframe and saying, hey, I don't have a whole lot of Auto King Catalyst or Forma, is it really worth upgrading the weapon? And I would say yes, but wait until the end of the review to make a call, if you don't have a whole lot of resources. Now, the Auto King Catalyst normally costs 20 plat to install, but you can also get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie if you are quote-unquote lucky, and you can also farm it from Grindwave. And some events also feature an Auto King Cat Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. Now my Sobek has been formatted all of six times. Yes, this is a Forma heavy weapon. For the weapon build, I'm recommending you, you might be able to get away with three or four, depending on the mod at your disposal. MTR cane slots, should I unlock you? Yep, yeah, duh. This is flat power. This is essentially flat power. Primary deadhead for a raw strength approach, something like corrosive feet, and primary merciless if your targets are gonna be dying under the effects of procs. Why I like Merciless in general over Deadhead is because of that reload speed. You see that? I put it on and my reload goes from that lengthy 2.7 to an only 2.1. So that's a pretty good added benefit. In the Excellent slot, technically this should be best in slot. But I'm only saying technically because it gives you a whole lot of fall off. And the fall off is fantastic and all whatnot. But you're not really gonna aim your Sobek plus 20 meters away. And that's when the standard fall off starts. So honestly, you don't really need it on this one considering that the weapon is hit scan. So do bear that one in mind. Consider Vigilante supplies if you have uh, issues with ammo and you want the enhanced critical chance that you can get from your sentinel anyway. More precision for headshots, battle in the narrow. Uh, counterbalance, believe it or not, is what I usually use in the case of this weapon, just to reduce the recoil, even though it's not really there. You know what? You can leave this one locked, especially if you don't have a whole lot of resources. Fall off you saw a fire rate of 2.5, a uh, tad on the sluggish side. It has two usability issues from my point of view that keeps this weapon from being an enjoyable day-to-day -day weapon. One, that blasted reload on 2.7, we can fix that. And second, that blasted fire rate on 2.5, and we can fix that as well. Magazine capacity is okay at 20, as long as we can bring that reload to under 1.8 seconds or so. Of course, this being a bit subjective. Multi-shot 5. Now, you see, you've, you would think that would be great, but when it comes to shotguns, it's really not all that high. Five pellets, not fantastic. Noise alarming, trigger auto. And the damage per projectile is mostly impact, which in this case is not fantastic. Now you might say, oh, impact the slash mods. Not for shotguns, thankfully, and I hope they would delete those blasted mods from the game, but they won't. So there you go. Trigger automatic, riven this for five out of five, five out of five. That means we're gonna be able to leverage the full power of riven mods. And you know what? Riven mods for Sobek, at least right now, are pretty cheap. So do better that one in mind. Critical chance, critical damage. Eh. Now, when I say critical damage, it's called the critical multiplier now. It used to be called critical damage. Anyway, 11% uh, is not great. 
is not great mama thankfully nowadays we got a 200 percent increase and yes that does make it viable for hunter munitions I'm sorry. Critical multiplier 2.0, status per projectile 16.2, which is actually quite low considering you only fire 5 projectiles, so there is that, and the damage is 350. So essentially, this damage that you see right here is damage per A pellet. You multiply this, and you get the 350. You get, you get 6, yeah, yeah okay, good. Fantastic. Now, my friends, before I go any further, this weapon has a really cool augment by the name of Acid Shells. Okay, it's very easy to get, no problem. Acid shells can be one of two things. It can be entirely worthless, or it can be the best thing since ketchup. All right, so I'm gonna have to tackle acid shells separately. Until then, however, let's have a look at a standard build. Damage point blind, multi shot, hell chamber, vigilante, armaments, critical chance, critical damage through the use of nada, nothing, my friends. As you can see, I'm not using hunter munitions in the initial setup. What I want to show you is a elemental raw strength approach setup. Just to begin with, okay, just to start with. Again, you can leave this one lock. I'm just gonna be using the balance of the counter just to give you an idea. This is a uh, corrosive heat approach with Toxic Barrage, Shell Shock, Blaze, and Scattering Inferno. None of these mods are expensive to get or even maxed out for that matter. See, just three, four, five little balls. That's a lot of balls, but that's not important. What is important, the hardest mod to obtain is Shell Shock here because this one can be obtained from the mission called Naelgar on the planet Eris. You gotta find all the free secret caches, 5% chance of getting this one or the rifle version upon extraction. Battle, however, also brings these mods. And when you see Battle bring it, trust me, save yourself some trouble and get Shell Shock and any other 6060 electricity mods that he might have. Now, my friends, we're gonna test out the build like so. We're gonna make sure we're not bumping up our damage with any, any Warframe buffs whatsoever because I wanna show you the performance of the weapon without any additional help before we go to get the additional help. It's important to understand what uh, the weapon is capable of on its own two bloody feet. We're gonna be using the standard test of Warframe, the Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 100 at 20. Gotta go straight for headshots. Yay, brah! I killed them with an introductory level weapon. Not only that, my friends, but the reload is uh is basically the same at this point, so it's still quite annoying. But the fire rate I have fixed. I have fixed the fire rate, and with that arcane, you can fix the reload as well. Now, what you can also do is use chilling reload and switch to vital heat setup. If you switch to vital heat, then you can use chilling reload for the vital part, and then you can increase the usability even further. I believe that it's more important to tackle the usability issues of a weapon than the damage, because damage everybody. Has. All right, as long as you know how to build your stuff. What a few key exceptions which will not go into right now for the sake of my or what's left of my sanity. This is standard performance out of the weapon, which is not bad. It could be a whole lot better now, couldn't it? And this is when we talk about acid shells. Now that's normal. That's fine. If you want to build it for acid shells, I need to explain to you guys a whole lot of things. But the build would look something along these lines. So we switched out blaze for vicious spread, we also got acid shells on the weapons and contagious spread. What I'm trying to do is get as much toxin as I can, even if that toxin is combined into elements like corrosive, and you'll understand why I'm doing that just a tad later. Now acid shells does the following. Enemies explode on death, dealing 450 corrosive damage, that's a fixed amount, and the 45% uh, enemy max health in a 15 meter radius. And I'll be honest, acid shells by itself Pretty worthless. For lower level content, sometimes it does something and sometimes it does not. But what you can do is leverage the mechanic of acid shells and how it works to actually get a whole lot of power out of a build such as this. And believe it or not, this is not even the max power. But to do that, however, what you will need is the following frame of war. Saren. It's an old trick. I know you guys know the Toxic Lash trick. The veterans know. I know veterans, you know, but not everybody knows. Now, she's got the following ability, which we will exploit to a certain extent. While active, it's called Toxic Lash. While active, attack deals toxin damage. This effect is doubled for melee strike. Instantly burst spores when attacking afflicted enemies. Essentially, we're going to be using Toxic Lash in combination with Acid Shells. And that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Which is why you want to get as much toxin as you can and all what not. Now, just those two by themselves... Still not gonna do a whole lot. You wanna add Rhino's Roar on top of things as well. Because essentially how Rhino Roar works is it multiplies everything. It's a separate multiplier entirely. So it's really one of the most powerful things you can add on a Warframe. Now if you hop into Warframe build, the Saren build, what you wanna do here is get as much power strength as you can. Just make sure that you're still able to legitimately play the Warframe and you're not too squishy and all whatnot. 
I kind of went all out here and we went with a full blind rage. Normally I would go with a half one. I believe I have one over here. See, something like this because it nukes that efficiency a bit too much. But for the sake of presentation, 268% power strength. Venom Dose is good on this one. Hole to cast will grant all allies within 50 meters additional 100% corrosive damage to their attacks for 40 seconds. And yes, you'd get it. Technically, the extra toxin you get from this, even though it's combined, will count, which is absolutely fantastic. This is an augment for your spore, so you get it. You don't tap spore, you just hold the button pressed down. And of course, again, as before, we got a whole lot of power strength. I wonder if I can, hold on, intensify, umbral intensify, that's an extra five, I can regain, nah, you know what? I'm really, I'm, I'm really kneecapping myself here, but I think it's still a good idea to show you as much power strength as possible, 282, 282, beautiful, fantastic, and all whatnot. Now, was that everything? It might have been everything. Oh, yes. You can take it even further than this. At this point, essentially, I'm trying to get as much ability strength as I can. So my free ability Toxic Lash does the most damage. What you can do is a number of additional things as well. You can use Madurai. In the Madurai talent, you will find Sling Strength switching to Warframe from a Chain Sling at 40% ability strength for 20 seconds. Now, that's pretty huge. But you know what? Let's assume you don't have Madurai unlocked. Let's assume you're a newer player, so we're just going to be using Naramon that doesn't give you any additional power strength. For more power strength, you can also use an Arcane like Molk Augmented, but honestly, this is getting a little bit too cookie cutter, so I don't want to throw everything at this and the kitchen sink. I want to see how viable it is as it stands. The mold thing, then the roar that I put from Rhino on my two from the helmet system, and now we're essentially going to kill a target. Wait, Toxic Blast, don't forget about that. And that procs it again and again. Essentially, it's a chain reaction, which is absolutely fantastic. So, yes, my friends, this augment can be absolutely amazing, incredible, powerful. And you know what? I'm not even leveraging its full theoretical power at this point. Definitely not. Toxic Lash, boom, boom. Absolutely bloody hilarious. You can get a whole lot more than this. And again, what you gotta do is use whatever means at your disposal to get yourself some more power strength array toxic lash in combination with acid shells and one last thing that should be mentioned it triple dips with faction mods but you know i find them a little bit discouraging to use so if you're going to be using a faction mod then it's going to be a whole lot more powerful as well essentially you can take this concept of a build pump it up and go to do whatever you want in warframe whatever level it doesn't really matter that is the power of acid shells but it only really works with toxic lash so do bear that one in mind. Now, back to our sheep. Let's say you got more access to more powerful mods in the game and you want a well, more rudimentary standard approach and you don't enjoy playing Saren for the Toxic Lash. And we got Galvanize Hell for the multi-shot. Galvanize Savvy because, yes, my friends, it does work on this one, obviously not being an explosive weapon. But honestly, I would make the argument that you try to fit some fire rate into this build so the weapon feels less sluggish. Uh, we're going to be using Prime Ravage, Hunter Munitions and Critical Deceleration because this is a critical build thanks to the Riven. I also got a bit more critical chance, bringing the critical chance to 48.2 so I can leverage the power of Hunter Munitions. Chilling Reload because honestly I don't really need more status chance so we're going to be using this one which solves my reload problem. We are now at 1.6 from 2.7 thanks to Merciless and Chilling Reload. And we're going to be testing out the weapon like so. Wait, not with Saren. We're going to pick up Rhino. Don't you guys love Rhino? Don't worry, no Warframe buffs. No anything of the sort. Spawning in the same level, 120 corrupted heavy goons as before. And we're gonna go for straight headshots, but of course this being a galvanized setup, what you gotta do is first get a kill so you get the ball rolling on the buffs and all whatnot. Like so. Look at that, just a couple of shots and now I'm getting more and more powerful by each and every single strike. It's not AoE, definitely not what you can get with acid shells, a pseudo form of AoE, a super viral spread disease destroying thing. But if you prefer a more standard approach, this is definitely a way to go. If not, again, the problem with the Acid Shell setup is the fact that it relies heavily on Saren. Now, this is a pretty strong setup, but these are standing still targets. What about some Steel Path gameplay? Welcome to Steel Path, my friends. Now, let's see what the Sobek can do versus level 130-ish Steel Path Corrupted Enemies. Now, we're not going to be using a whole lot of Warframe buffs, but I am going to be using Revenant because this makes it a whole lot easier to get yourself the damage on and all whatnot. Again, I feel like Fire Rate is really something that you should invest to, but if you don't want to, it's totally fine. At least get the reload speed. 
As you will see, there's really not any kind of target that can stand before you as the weapon is plenty capable of clearing steel path without any issue whatsoever. And I'm stalling for time so I can find some goddamn targets. Oh look, a target. Thank you so much, I was looking for you. There you go. Make sure you stack up as well as you can, considering this is a galvanized setup and all whatnot. Put a couple of shots in, watch the slashes tick away, because you are getting plenty of slashes out of hunting even though your critical chance is not super sky high. This is a corrupted heavy goon level 130, it got absolutely annihilated. Of course the corpus don't really stand much of a chance of winning and the infested either. And I do believe my friends there is... I don't know what else to show you in Steel Path that would convince you further that the weapon absolutely shreds. That's good for a single target setup, but what if you guys want to go with Saturn and Acid Shells? That's a question, right? You know, it would be fantastic if if Saren would give away her Toxic Lash ability at the helmet, but unfortunately she only gives mold. So we're gonna go to Saren and that beautiful, beautiful Rhino Roar. Now what you gotta bear in mind is that Saren is a whole lot more, yep, she's a whole lot, yep. She's a whole lot more fragile than something like a Revenant, but as you can see, this build absolutely shreds with no problem whatsoever. I'm gonna be completely annihilating whatever stands before me in pretty gruesome fashion. As you can see, I'm essentially exploding everything. Is as simple as that. Look at that. Boom, boom. And it keeps going from target to target. Keep spread. Spread the love, man. That's what you gotta do. You gotta spread the love. I love how the targets just bloody explode. It's just, just freaking sensational. And of course, it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. That's a corrupted heavy goon. And it's absolutely gone. And it's gonna take away targets with him because that's a beef target, right? More EHP means the explosion is gonna be even greater. Not a whole lot of targets left, please. I need a big target to explode so I can explode other targets like that and like this. But I think you got to see everything you need to, my friends. Now let's hop on back to the simulacrum. Another approach, and my favorite approach when it comes to Warframe buffs, is good old-fashioned Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding buffs. But of course, we're gonna have to fix that fashion and all whatnot. Keep in mind that on my Sobek I'm using a skin, that's why it's looking slightly better. I believe the Sobek Desert Ammo skin, because it doesn't really change the way the weapon looks, so you still got that iconic BB gun look, but you can color it just a pinch better. And I think you also have the option for the Day of the Dead Sobek. Oh yeah, that with the purple. That with the purple, yeah, with the skulls and everything, not bad. Now, corrosive projection when it comes to heavily armored targets, that should be obvious at this point. Please don't feel forced into this one. It's something you can go for, but you must not necessarily prioritize this one at the cost of your build. If your Warframe build uh, calls for something like energy, siphon, physique, rejuvenation, and whatnot, you can go for something like so. Oh, by the way, growing power is also a good idea if you want to go for the toxic flash approach and all whatnot. Arcane Avenger, a must-have in this case, 45% critical chance, bonus additive after, it doesn't care about the base critical chance of your weapon, so it's gonna be helping out our Sobek greatly. Farm from the third Eidolon down on Cetus, and here's an Arcane that doesn't see a whole lot of use and I absolutely love, Arcane Tempo! On critical hit, 50% chance for 90% fire rate to shotguns for 12 seconds. So you see, earlier I didn't have that good feel when playing with a weapon because I had to sacrifice my fire rate mod for Galvanized Savvy or Prime Ravage. But now I'm getting that bonus from the Arcane. So you basically gotta balance out what you can do in terms of mods and what you can get in terms of Warframe buffs, Arcanes and all what not. Hold on, this should also fit counterbalance, why doesn't it? Oh, this is why, my bad. Now we can go. When it comes to companion buffs, what you can go for is for the Panzer Vulpophila. If you don't want a weapon with Vital on it, totally doable. You forget about uh, that and you simply use the Panzer Vulpophila. Keep in mind that the Vital procs from the Vulpophila are not as reliable as your own gun. Another option, especially if you feel you're lacking crit, is to go for something like any Sentinel you want. Just make sure that on that Sentinel's weapon you got the Vigilante mods, Offense, Supplies, Fervor and Armaments. If you're gonna be using any one of these, especially Supplies on your weapon, you don't need to use it on your Sentinel's weapon anymore. Even if the poor little sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain your buff. So please, bear that one in mind. It's a pretty good trick. It's not something that will set you apart or oh, a super ultra mega buff, but it's something nice to have. Activate Empower for Mirage and her free ability for an absolutely godlike Eclipse buff. And yes, you can have even more than that. And finally, for the best animation ever designed in Warframe. However so lovely, beautiful clones. And of course, we're gonna go straight for headshots. Man, the weapon feels so much better now. You gotta have the fire rate. Of course, it can one-shot high-level targets. Look, just, that's it. But you can also do this. You got the fire rate, you got the reload speed, you got the usability. What more do you need? 
And I do believe, my friends, that's pretty much it for the Sobek. Honestly, this is such an amazing weapon. It's so low in MR and it actually offers you the opportunity to build and grow with the weapon. If you want to keep the weapon, and because you like it, because you were attached to it, and you want to keep growing with it, keep investing into it, you can do so, because essentially, with the right build, you can do almost whatever you want in Warframe. It is absolutely fantastic, and it's a weapon that I highly recommend. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. If you feel I missed something or would like to add something, again, love to hear about it in the comment section down below. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But until next time, my friends. Wait, I forgot about the Patreon plugin. Hold on, Patreon plugin. If you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.